Hey, this is Elise Bowie with the Maximum Mom podcast, and I'm here today with Sarah Frasca. Hey, Sarah. Good morning, Elise. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I feel like you and I could talk for three hours, and of course, I'll try to keep it not to three hours. But... I feel the same way, and I'm just excited to chat with you. Every time I can, it's a joy. Yeah, well, I feel the same way. First, I always like people to tell us what makes you a mom. Tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, that's the most important part of my world, as it is, I know, for a lot of your listeners and for you. Um, I have five children. Two are biological, three are step. So um, another crazy family full of lots of kids, lots of activities. Um, but we really, we have just a wonderful, wonderful little life. Uh, my husband is a teacher and we both just knew that we wanted to be parents and we have really enjoyed blending our families together and building a family. So it's been That's really amazing. Special. How old are the kids? What is the range? Yeah. So the oldest is 14 and then 12, 11, 10 and eight. So we do kind of have them all bunched together, which you know, has some challenges, but I would say um, they are, I mean, I mean, now they are siblings. They love each other like siblings. They fight like siblings. I mean, it's very fun. Um, they're doing great, but, you know, I think the fact that they go to their other parents sometimes kind of creates this little natural tension that when they get back together again, they are happy as clams. Then they'll fight. Then they go off to their other parents. So <laughs> the cycle is actually working to our benefit. So it's been pretty fun. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, I think it's fascinating when you get to see blended families that actually work. Because obviously, you know, in my work as a family law attorney, a lot of times you see blended families that are kind of, it's a real struggle for some. And I think that, I think it's really inspirational when people can see blended families that work and when there's co-parenting relationships on both sides that are working and the children just thrive. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. We've had, we've been very blessed with just the way that it's all come together and the personalities of the kids, I think, make a difference too. And um, again, I, I really feel like I have a special partner in my husband. He's a teacher, you know, by trade, but also just kind of that way right. in his life. So um, you know, we both, I mean, it's, it, it's a daily grind sometimes, but it's, you know, <laughs> what it is to be a parent. And, and I think we're really committed to just making sure that they have just a firm, fair and consistent world. Right. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Well, and I think it'll be fun for you. You'll be doing the college thing that I did when I had <laughs> like four kids in college at the same time. And you're like, whoa, whose yeah. bill am I paying this week? <laughs> And I know. Can I eat more lentils this month to be able to make that uh, work? The, fin um, the financials are daunting. I think our <laughs> our vision is that we're going to somehow get you know like a like an RV or whatever, and we're just going to travel around and see all the kids for wherever they went to college. So that's oh. our vision of what our our life looks like when they when they go to college. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's a fun vision, and I think you'll find you'll stay very, very busy. I mean, I just have to, when we had, I guess, just three in college, I had one who was playing college football, and then one who was still in high school playing high school football, and I'm definitely that mom who goes to all the games. You know, I love football games, and so we would go to a Friday night game here in Seattle, and then hop on a red eye and fly to Chicago for a one o'clock Saturday <laughs> came and we did this like week after week and but I wow. mean it was so fun to be able to go see those games and you know be involved in that and so I really I mean this was our first fall not going to football games in many many years so that was kind of weird but that's um, really special yeah I, I look forward to that I came from a family that's very similar although it wasn't football it was hockey so <laughs> Yeah. Our family just traveled around watching hockey every weekend. And so I can relate. Absolutely. Pretty, Pretty special. Well, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your career path. I mean, I know there's like multifaceted Sarah. So, I mean, I know <laughs> the Sarah who's the fireproof coach who works with my firm. I mean, tell us all about what you do and how did you get here? Yeah, thanks, Elise. Well, I mean, I would say my path has been meandering. Um, I, I certainly have had a lot of fun and I consider myself kind of more of a generalist than a specialist, which has meant that I've done a lot of different things in my life. Um, I started out actually in corporate America. I worked for General Mills um, 
you know, the, the manufacturer of food up in the Minneapolis area for about 15 years and um, really had a great time learning, you know, how to kind of manage those big brands, how to, um, you know, engage with consumers to motivate consumer behavior. And then also I worked on the retail side, working with the uh, grocers that sell the products. So I would say um, it was a really great learning place. I think one of the things that I enjoyed was just learning kind of, it was almost like getting my MBA. I mean, you, you right. learn so many aspects of the business um, and you soak in so much. And there's so many intelligent folks that, um, you know, really have a lot to teach. And um, it was a really great start. So loved all of that. I would not change that um, in a million years. But I had kind of a fire in my belly. And I know a lot of the entrepreneur um, folks on the phone or on the, on the listeners can relate. I mean, I just had this internal intensity that I knew I needed to do my own thing. I needed to carve my own path. So um, I actually left General Mills, believe it or not, to start a restaurant. And I followed in my family's footsteps. So I am the third generation to serve our food. It was actually my grandmother that invented our sandwich in 1974. And we've been doing this ever since. Um, it was my grandparents, then it was my parents and my aunts and uncles, and then now it's my cousins and I. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was a labor of love, I would say. Um, wow. you know, so the startup piece, I guess my point is I, I started in corporate America, you know, just kind of being a, a cog in the wheel in the right. big system, wonderful place, but very different when I when I moved to the startup world. And I was, as you and, you know, listeners know, I mean, I, I was doing the marketing and the payroll and the training and the answering the phones and all of the things. So including I, dishes. Yeah, right, dishes, yeah. buying mayonnaise. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, you know, I had, I had so much fun opening the restaurant, but, you know, as I, as I progressed and I, I was, you know, not only working in the business, but then started to work on the business, I realized that I could at some point leave the restaurant in the hands of a general manager and kind of peel back so that I was, you know, more of uh, the owner and the visionary to use the EOS term. Um, and, you know, I was able to restart my career. So um, again, a very funny kind of twist of fate. I ended up um, working with a firm that um, I started doing some keynote speaking and workshops and built a, a speaking career um, for a few years. And I still do quite a bit of keynote speaking and quite a bit of uh, workshops on the topic of innovation. So Again, I know this is a, a strange departure from all the other things, but it um, it actually ends up kind of making sense. I would say I really, again, feel that big organizations need to have this entrepreneurial fire in order to keep right. thriving, right? Totally. We've got so many great examples or terrible examples, I guess, as they are, um, where big businesses forget to challenge the status quo. They forget right. to you know, really lean into what's next and they get outseated by some little startup and, you know, a, a entrepreneur in a hoodie and, and all of a sudden their business is gone, left in the dust. So I really do feel like I have this good blend of corporate and startup that I can help businesses um, to push the envelope and, and kind of challenge their conventional wisdom. So anyway, and then um, it led me to this fabulous book, which I know you and your team have read, which is Fireproof. And Boy, that was um, kind of a whirlwind. When the book launched, the writers of the book, the two authors who I know you are well familiar with, they couldn't believe the outpouring of folks like yourself that said, oh my gosh, this book is amazing, but can you help me take these <laughs> principles and apply them to my firm. So now I have the blessing of really kind of weaving together all of the things that I've done in my career to help law firms. So um, when I summarize it, it's data, marketing, it's this innovation component, and then it's the EOS, the entrepreneurial bu business, entrepreneurial operating system. It's this business system that I can then apply and help uh, law firm owners and their teams. It's so. amazing. I love, I mean, <laughs> I absolutely love though how meandering it is. I think yeah. that meandering nature is all part of your entrepreneurial spirit. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't always need to be this linear, we get a job here and we do this little path till we get to the end. I mean, I think of what a rich tapestry of experience you have. And it's amazing. I just, I mean, I find it fascinating. It's nice of you. I think it, 
it makes my husband's head spin sometimes, but I love every bit of it. I mean, I, it's funny. I'm one of those people that if I don't absolutely love and have that kick off the sheets feeling every day, I, it's time for me to move on. And, and totally. have been times for me to <laughs> move on, but I have enjoyed every single step of my career. And I'm very, very, um, I just love with an intensity what I'm doing now. So it's been a really fun journey. <laughs> oh, I think that kick off the sheets feeling is key. I actually read something this morning and somebody posted something kind of like, if you dread Monday, you need to be doing something else. And I think that of all the days, I mean, if you're dreading when you get up in the morning with what's facing you, you really do need to rethink what you're doing. I agree. Because life I is just, short. Life is way too short. And who wants to be grumpy? Like to me, if you're kind of miserable doing what you're doing, you're kind of grumpy. And so I, I don't know, I love to wake up happy every day. I feel like I start every day anew, no matter, I mean, all kinds of hell could have broken loose yesterday and I'm going to wake up the next day happy. Like it always happens. And I think though, I can't imagine, you know, bringing a lot of that from day to day when you're dealing with things. I just think that's got to be such a burden. And so- I just really agree with you. I mean, and I love when you say your your husband's head is spinning. I feel that as well. I know my husband's head is spinning all the time, wow. but I think it makes such a great team. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have somebody who is more in, in our family, I mean, he's definitely more of the integrator, you know, like he's the one who's going to be keeping me on track about things. He's going to be having a spreadsheet in front of me. Like, let's look at these costs and let's, you know, he really keeps me grounded, which is super helpful. Cause otherwise, I mean, you know, Lord knows where I'll be in a week. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> We're blessed with good partners. There's no question. Absolutely. It makes all the difference. I love it. Yes. Well, tell us about your speaking. I'm super curious yeah. to know more about your speaking business, who you work for, who you'll speak for, because finding a dynamic speaker is not always the easiest thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it kind of happens organically for me, um, but I will tell you the topic of innovation is something that I'm very passionate about. I think there are too many teams, too many organizations, and too many people in general that just simply rely on the methods of the past, and they just are not thinking about the future, um, and then they're thwarted by competition. Again, they, they lose everything, um, and you know, there's a saying that I, that I've, that I love um, that is, you know, someday a company will come along and put us out of business. And it might as well be us. We might yeah. well reinvent ourselves. We might push the envelope. We have to really do that in order to be relevant and in order to thrive into the future. So what I do with my speaking is um, I really try to do two things. I try to motivate change and really inspire a new mindset, a fresh way of thinking. And then the second thing is that I like to give actionable tools that people can use from that day forward. And they're very simple. They're you know, kind of easy to comprehend, but it's just those little things that people can remember when they're faced with a challenge and they need to look at it in a different way. So those are the types of principles that I really try to um, help my clients with and help, you know, our fireproof clients with. Um, it, and it honestly, it's been so fun. I've, I've been working with, you know, financial services organizations. I've worked with retailers like a Target. I've worked with um, folks in the food industry. I've worked with right. schools. I, I will tell you, Elise, I've probably worked with 10 school districts this year because they are desperate to help their administration and their teachers. Oh, I mean, that, just, that warms my heart though. Yeah. Talk about an, yeah. an area that desperately needs innovation. I agree. I mean, and I think with COVID, I hope with COVID, we saw how much innovation is truly needed in schools mm -hmm. that the whole model we have of sitting everyone in a classroom, making sure they all learn some set rote thing to take some set standardized test is not really the best way to inspire passion and inspire people to really come out intellectually with their best selves. Mm -hmm. And I just think innovation is so needed in schools. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been a it's been a real pleasure. I would say half of the schools I've I've actually donated my time because it is just a crazy year, and I was happy to do it. Um, but yeah, just like you said, I mean, these people are desperate, and luckily, you know, the the districts see this and they've been willing. But anyway, the point is there. It really is industryless in a lot of cases. I mean, whether it's automotive or you know law yeah. or any any industry. Um, I really feel it is necessary to not only help the business from a, you know, a, a growth perspective, but also to help empower the people in the organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. people come as their true self when they feel like they can come with that creative energy. They feel motivated. They feel, Absolutely. yeah. So I think there's a win-win there both for the organization as well as their teams. Well, and I just, I mean, it just makes me happy to hear about, you know, talking about innovation and listening to somebody talk about innovation, because one of the things that I feel so strongly about, and I say, and sometimes my team, they're like, Elise, you can't say this publicly. I'm like, yes, I can. You know, the whole idea that working at a law firm doesn't have to suck. Yeah. And to make it not suck, we must be innovative and we must look around us at people and at systems and at automation and at efficiencies and how do we better serve our clients in mm -hmm. ways that are fulfilling to people rather than draining, you know, how do we do our work in a way that we are just coming to it from our best selves and we're bringing that to our clients and that it, it's not a big drag, you know, and it's not this really negative thing. And I think law firms have such a reputation of being a really difficult place to work. And that's something that I know personally, I really want to change and I want it to be different, you know, where people come to work and their ideas are welcomed and they're, you know, instead of that mindset, like you mentioned where, oh, this is how we always do it. I'm like, let's figure out all new ways. I mean, let's look at intake and just toss it all up in the air and make it look different, you know, and make it dynamic. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things that you do for your people, Elise, is that I think you've given them the gift of thinking. I mean, no one wants to show up and be a robot. I mean, it's just no. boring, right? It's horrible. And it doesn't matter, again, which industry, which role you are in an organization. I think people are innately good. They really do want to make a difference. They want to be a part of the solution. Okay. When you've got leadership and you've got owners that are willing to allow that because they can see the, the benefit, I think it's again, that win-win. Um, the other thing that you said that I really love is that, you know, innovation does not have to be a product or a massive process. I mean, it's, it's not always things like Airbnb and Uber. And of course, those are important and yeah. obviously very impressive, but sometimes it's the little things. It's the ways that we run our meetings or we call our clients or we take an intake call. I mean, it's those little things that can make a difference in the way that we serve our clients, our customers, our people. So I, I love thinking of it as those micro innovations that can lead to a big difference. It's that Kaizen philosophy, right? Like how do we have so many micro innovations that now we've got something completely different than everyone else. I love that. Well, and I think in today's world, I mean, I guess I'm kind of banking on it, but I, I really believe it that a lot of things will be automated. You know, I think AI is doing a lot for law and in the legal world, and a lot of things are gonna become more and more automated. But the thing that cannot be automated is caring. And actually that one-to-one -one emotional connection with our clients, our communities, our team members, and figuring out how to innovate those things and making that kind of like your unique proposition that you are out there. Oh, excuse my cat who just popped <laughs> up. <laughs> I love it. John, that's Ethan's favorite cat in the world. Um, <laughs> but really innovating those one-to-one -one, um, contacts and really making that such an important part of what we do I think it's just critical. I mean, I see it when, you know, if we have an upset client or whatever. I mean, I always take those calls and have those conversations. And I mean, sometimes those conversations are set down for 15 minutes and they might last for two hours. Right. But I mean, taking that time and being there for that client. I mean, I never regret a minute I spend doing those things because I think that it always, no matter what 
ends up like maybe they need to go to another firm. Maybe we're not a good fit. I mean, who knows? It could be a variety of things. They never end up wrong though. Like it always, I have been able to either mend the relationship, create a path forward in some way, whether it's introducing them to a new attorney, all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, it's kind of critical. And I think, I mean, it's part of that whole, you know, how are you really coming to work every day? And, you know, how are you meeting with the people who are coming to you at such a difficult time, at least in the kind of work we do, I mean, it's a really difficult time to come to an attorney when you need a divorce or having a big custody battle. And I think caring and just genuinely being there human to human is so important. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. And again, I mean, you've been innovative to almost return to, you know, a former way of, of how we gave customer service. And it's different than the models of today. The automation can help you you know, do things faster on the tasks that don't require that high level of involvement. And then that frees you up to have the type of care that you'd like to give your clients um, with that excess time or with that, you know, that you've right. saved some time over here in order to do better things over here. So I, I love the fact that, again, you're challenging the ways of today, you're challenging the ways of most firms um, in order to make something really special. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Well, and Fireproof, I think, really fits with that so well because of like when I look at our meetings now, they're so much more, um, you know, dialed in and we get so much more done. And I love when, you know, we go to these, we've created our little extra issue meeting. So our leadership team sits and has an extra leadership meeting every week, but it it allows us to go through some serious issues and make decisions and decide even what maybe doesn't need to be decided right now and what could be put on the long term. And I mean, can you explain a little bit about how Fireproof works and kind of what the overall, you know, system is set up to do? Of course, of course. Yeah. And thank you for the opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, it's, it's really been a special kind of way of taking EOS, which again stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System, and applying it to the law industry. So that I think is, is the, um, the special part of Fireproof is that it's the application of this tremendous business system to law and to law, firmer, law firms um, in order to drive accountability, to yeah. drive alignment for a firm so that the visionary, which oftentimes someone like yourself, you know, they own, they've built this beautiful firm, they need other people to do things. So how can we push that accountability to the various roles in the organization, um, aligning them on the most important tasks, giving them the meeting cadence, giving them the kind of metric setting, uh, quarterly pulse setting so that they can actually make progress that is meaningful for them and is, I would say, transparent to the entire organization so that we all together know who's doing what, how it's getting done, how are we performing? Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, I would like to say it's kind of a, a model to drive the firm from being just a law firm running with unpredictability and like, oh, I hope we make our quarterly goals. Oh, I hope we get settlements and fees in here to a place where we've got the predictability. We've got a system we can rely on and it's actually running your law firm like a business. Right. It's the practice of turning it into an, a business, a profitable business. Imagine that, right? One that you can depend on, one that is meaningful to the founder, the owner, the visionary, um, and meaningful to the employees because they're all kind of working towards the same goals of serving clients, of you know, meeting the financial goals even of the firm. So it's, it's really a special system. I've been honored to be a coach and to help lead the charge with several uh, folks throughout the country that have beautiful firms like yourself that um, are hopefully seeing a big difference. Yeah, well, it has been, I mean, game changing for us. And I know, you know, when we first started and we as a leadership team kind of came together because we were going to like ramp up in smaller ways. And my leadership team was so like, no, we're going to do it all at once. And I was like, this is going to be bumpy. You know, this is going to be difficult. And they were all on board with bumpy and we have seen bumpy. I mean, it has been some bumpy months and I have to tell you, I could not be happier. Like the bumpiness has been 
exactly what we've needed. I mean, you know, we've had some addition by subtraction. We've had some really tough conversations with people. And for me, the thing that I have been able to just, I mean, in spades get out of it is that our core values are so set in stone and so adopted and aligned with everyone that we now, I mean, we can talk in terms of our core values when we're looking to hire people, when we're thinking about, you know, how do we handle this client in this request or this, you know, situation that's come up. And I literally pull up, I mean, I have my core values now taped to my desk so that I can literally look and be like, where does this fall within all of these? And it has simplified decision-making like none other. Because I can have conversations with other people on my leadership team. And I'm like, you know, let's talk about integrity and let's talk about, you know, this and how does this action, you know, play into that and really be able to have those just, I think, powerful, powerful conversations. And the fact that we've lost some people, it's, it's all the way it's supposed to be. You know, I think that we are doing exactly what we need to be doing and moving exactly where we need to be moving. And I can tell though, when you talk about innovation, I can tell for us, one of the big things next is gonna be innovation and hiring. And how do we look to people's, cause people need things different today than they did in the past. COVID has upended everybody's normal existence. And we have people who are caring for elderly people, people who are still dealing with children at home on hybrid schedules. And we are needing, when I am talking to people now about jobs, I'm like, you tell me how many hours you wanna work. You tell me what days work for you. And then let's look at the numbers and we can, I mean, we can work out any kind of numbers. We just need to figure out what's gonna work for you. And I think being nimble enough to do that and have that fit within our core values is going to be really game changing for us moving forward. I think that's so powerful. I think that gives you such a recruiting advantage and, and totally. to be able to meet people's needs. And I think you're right. I think the world is, is um, so different, so vastly different that, I mean, remote-based work is, right. you know, for some of the positions can be done almost anywhere in the world now. Absolutely. So I think it'll open up pools of candidates that we just didn't have access to before. And um, I think that's very, very helpful for a business. You know, I, I will tell you that, you know, I think it has been a joy to fireproof your business. Um, I've seen such growth in your team. And I've just, I've, I mean, it's, it's something I look forward to every week is working with your team. They're just such good people. I think from, from their very essence, they're just very, very good people. Um, but I also can speak to the process as an owner. I, I actually fireproofed my <laughs> restaurant, which I know sounds crazy because we really talk about it with law firms, but it has been just as effective with my restaurant. And I know now what it's like to sit on the other side and say, right. gosh, this is the most fun I've ever had running my restaurant because oh. now my team, they're making decisions and they're so excited and they are having so much fun and boy, is that rewarding. So I hope, I hope you felt the same. It's it seems so, like, oh, it's yeah. so rewarding. And <laughs> The thing that I find is, you know how when you were doing it all, like ordering the mayonnaise or for me running invoices every single Saturday, you know, I was doing that for years. Now I have these people who are doing it and they are all the combined intelligence of all these people so far surpasses my own. It's not even recognizable. And that to me is the most powerful thing when I'm able to step back and be like, I'm kind of at the end of my blonde brain here. Like we have got to really go bigger and seeing these people come together and come up with solutions that I didn't even consider, like yeah. literally did not even cross my mind. And I'm like, oh, now that would have been a good idea a few years ago. You know? hey. This is what I tell my team at the restaurant. I say to them that I brought all my best ideas when I opened the restaurant. <laughs> now I need their best ideas to take it into the future. So Completely. you can do that if you like, but yeah, I mean, honestly, just the, I mean, it's one plus one plus one equals 15, right? Like <laughs> great best ideas and let's make this huge and big and great. 
So that's the thing I love is just the maximizing the intelligence. I mean, I am sometimes just mind blown when I sit around and listen to what other people think and their ideas. And I, I literally feel like my head explodes sometimes because I'm like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I never thought of that. And I just feel like it's been, it's just, oh, it's so rewarding. And to watch other people gain that feeling of ownership and accountability for what's happening. I love nothing less than when somebody calls me and they're like, Elise, I was looking at these numbers and I'm seeing that it's a little off, you know, and they're like, I don't mean to be stepping on your toes, but I think we might be do paying this person wrong or doing this. I'm like, you run with that. Like, and and they really do step in. And it's just kind of amazing because one person can't think of everything. Let's be serious. Oh, I know. I agree with you. <laughs> oh, brother. I mean, I think decision fatigue is real. Just, I mean, sometimes just being a mom, I think alone. I mean, there are many days in my mom mode, I feel like, and my kids are much older than yours. You just feel like zapped from all the decisions you're making. That's true. That is true. And that's one thing about Fireproof I love is it gives us a set time where we can make those decisions, come together, talk about them, and then we can figure out, can we solve it now? Do we need to move it? Do we need to break it down into smaller parts? It's just very simplified so that I think you can watch problems get solved. Yes, and I agree. I mean, the cadence that they've set up to kind of help teams move through the course of running a business, I think, um, again, I, I, I think it's such a tremendous business system. It's the best I've ever been a part of. Um, and to teach it to clients, you know, is a real joy. Not every client is the same. I mean, they, they don't all, you know, take our advice or, or do the things perfectly. Um, but your team has really embodied it. I would say, you know, if, if anyone reads Fireproof, they'll, they'll get this cute story. But, um, you know, when, when Michael was hiring John, he said, okay, go out and read Traction. And John came back and he said, okay, I've read it. How much of this are we going to do? And Michael said, every word. So I mean, that principled approach to taking this business system and applying it to their law firm was the game changer. I mean, it made everything different. It, it made them run like a business finally. And so again, that is what I hope we do with this fireproof system is help, help owners get control help them drive, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do, whether it's profitability or scaling into another market or empowering their teams. I mean, those are the types of things that we really focus on. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, and I love the story of John and Michael where, you know, they really had to kind of turn those reins over to John. And so Michael went like, you know, MIA, no one could contact him, but John. And I think he had like a burner phone or something, not <laughs> even like his real cell phone, you know, he went like underground drug dealer, and, um, you know, and True. I just think, I mean, if we're doing that this summer where I'm interestingly going off in my RV that we bought to bring <laughs> Ethan out to Michigan. So I'll actually be visiting John and Michael during that trip, but I'm going to have no, nobody can contact me, but my integrator. And so I think that, you know, we're all a little nervous about it and we've been kind of planning and, you know, setting things up, but I think it's going to be an amazing opportunity. I mean, obviously we'll, I'm sure have many problems, but without doing it, we wouldn't know what they are. And so it's going to allow us then to fix those problems. That's right. Yes. And I, I actually, I feel confident that your integrator will do just fine with the situation as will your leadership team. And it'll give oh, you, you know, a well-earned break too, Elise. I know you're, you're so hardworking and, and, um, humble about all the things that you do within your firm still, but, you know, to get you into a spot where you're focused in your best work, you're doing the things that you are the best at and that you want to do. You've earned that after all these years of building such a beautiful firm. And so that's, that's, I think going to be a real win-win is um, your team will run the show and you get to have a little much earned <laughs> vacation. So <laughs> I don't know if being in an RV with an 18 year old <laughs> can classify as a vacation, but you know, he's definitely put his happy face on and he's going with it. And so Good. it'll be interesting. Yeah. We're going to get to go and stop at some national parks. So that's going to be huge fun. And Doug and I are going to come back through Jackson hole. We've never been to Jackson hole. And cool. so 
yeah, I was super interested to go see and they have a lovely four seasons there. So I was like, okay, we're going to, well, so we won't stay in our RV for that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful. It'll be a trip of a lifetime. You'll Absolutely. never forget it. Well, yeah. and it's our last child going off to college. Like, I mean, that's a big deal. Yes. And so, I mean, he just finished his last class on Friday, his last class of high school. Wow. He, he does a month long like internship now, but he finished his classes. And I was like, I think between Doug and I, we've been dealing with classes since for 26 years. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just weird to think about like, we're done with that part now. Again, a much deserved break. <laughs> yeah, you feel like you've attended enough parent teacher conferences for a lifetime, for sure. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you being with me today and talking to me about your career path and about Fireproof and about your speaking. I really, in our notes that we put out, I would love to get links to these different things. I really would love, I mean, I'd love to get links to your restaurant for those that live in your area. And I would love to get links to your speaking because I think that, I mean, the things that I've been able to see, I mean, your speaking is so dynamic. And so I would just love for people to learn more about that aspect of what you do as well, in addition to your coaching with Fireproof. And Thank so, we, yeah, we'll make sure to get those out in the, the show notes and in the comments. That's great. Well, thank you. Yes, it's really a, a joy to impact an organization and see them thrive through, you know, really um, inventive thinking, creative problem solving, whatever you want to call it. So it's been, it's been really fun. And thank you for having me on the show. I, I really, again, it's a true joy to work with your team. It's been so much fun for me personally and professionally. And uh, I look forward to a very bright future. Yeah, me too. Well, I love it. Okay, well, thank you so much. And you and I will see each other soon, I'm sure. <laughs> At our next week. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Have a great rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Bye, Sarah.